Greetings. My name is Sergio Morales, and I'm the executive director of the California School-Based Health Alliance, or CSHA. CSHA is a statewide nonprofit dedicated to improving the health and academic success of children and youth by advancing health services in schools. Simply put, we put healthcare where kids are. A primary focus of our work is to help start, expand, and improve school-based health and wellness centers in public schools in California. So that way children and youth can get the primary medical care and behavioral health support that they need to thrive in school and in life. School-based health and wellness centers are all beautifully unique to each respective school community they're located in. They are designed to meet the student and community specific healthcare needs. They're student focused, providing age appropriate clinical healthcare services by qualified healthcare professionals. They provide medical care, behavioral health services, may offer dental services, telehealth, mobile units, and a variety of additional services. When talking about school-based health and wellness centers, the hundreds that currently exist in California, we have a frequent saying, if you've seen one, you've seen one. CSHA has invited some of our key partners from across California to guide us through a virtual tour of their sites so that we could see how their school-based health and wellness centers meet the healthcare needs of the students they serve. I am thrilled that you are joining me today in this virtual tour so you can have a deeper understanding of what it looks like to put healthcare where kids are in schools. Thank you.
name is Priscilla. I am the medical assistant and clinic supervisor here at Youth Heart Health Center. So here at La Clinica School-Based Health Centers, we are a community-based clinic. We offer services to schools that are nearby to us and to the community. Anything from vaccines, physicals, checkups, uh, confidential visits, also optometry visit, and behavioral health. Working with a school makes it very easy to communicate with students, uh, their appointments, and knowing what is expected from them, um, and knowing that this is a second home for them um, if they're in need of any support or they're asking questions that they might not be given at home. My favorite thing about school centers is that it's accessible to students, meaning that if they are in need of a service right away and if there's availability with the day of, they could get seen or it could be done with the next following appointment that could be either the following day or within the week of. Depending on the urgency, we take care of it. School health centers is the best way you could go. <laughs> Thank you, Priscilla. Thank you. Hello, my name is Nidia Inigas. I'm the human service specialist here at Youth Heart Health Center. Okay. School-based health centers, specifically Youth Heart Health Center, are clinics that are made by students for the students. Um, so Youth Heart Health Center was made by a group of students. The name was created by one of the students. Um, also, like the wall color from like the design, uh, the blueprints. So it, it's very important for them to feel a sense of ownership because it's their space. Um, I'm Karen Gersten Rothenberg. I'm the family nurse practitioner, and I'm the medical director for the school-based health centers at La Clinica. So we have a medical component um, that looks like sort of looks like a pediatric office for some patients. It's full scope medical care for children. Um, for other patients, it looks like what we call sensitive services, which is confidential sexual and reproductive health care. Um, we also are integrated with behavioral health. So there's a really easy flow between medical and behavioral health, which means if a young person comes in for problem A, um, and sees me, I'm gonna not just address problem A, but I'm gonna ask them how their life is going and what their stressors are. And I'm gonna try to find out if there are any issues that would benefit from, um, uh, from some therapy. Um, because we know that young people do really well when they get therapy if they, if they need it. Um, and then if, if that happens, I'll introduce the person to our therapist and see if it's a good match and then they can kind of take it from there. Um, for other young people, it looks like health education, which could be a one-on-one -on -one visit with a health educator to learn more about how to eat healthy or about birth control methods um, or to explore their gender. Um, and then for other people, it might look like what we call case management, which is help with getting some of the basic resources that sometimes families don't have, like how to sign up for medical insurance or where to find food or how to even enroll in school if they're new to the area. Um, and then for other people, it will look like going to the dentist. So um, school -based, our school-based health centers have all of that and young people can come for all of it or just a piece of it um, if they only need a piece of it. So what I really like about our school-based health centers is that we're really welcoming. We have something for everyone. Some students maybe come once for a sports physical and never need anything again and other students might come a lot more often because they have more complicated medical needs um, or uh, health education needs or dental needs or behavioral health needs. So I love school-based health centers. Um, I think it's really fun to work in a school because you get to see what's happening in a school, you get to support the school, and you also get to help young people learn how to use the medical system. You know, if you think about it, many people never go to a doctor or a nurse practitioner on their own until they're adults or until they land in the emergency room. So we're really teaching young people how to be good consumers of healthcare and how to think about how to take care of themselves and to use the resources that we have. Um, I also love school-based health centers because we can be really responsive to the needs of our particular schools. We can really dig in and listen to hear what the needs are. My name is Emma Brenner Bryant, and I'm the health education supervisor at La Clinica School Based Health Centers. Health education is sort of an extra service that we offer to our patients at School Based Health. 
Um, so our health educators see patients in collaboration with a medical provider um, for nutrition and for sexual health visits. Um, and they spend time getting to know the patient, ask a lot of questions, um, and provide education on the topics that they're working with patients for. Um, and then they also help patients actually make sense of the guidance our providers are giving and how they can implement it actually in their day-to-day -day lives. Um, in addition to clinical visits, our health educators go into classrooms and they present about all of our clinic services. They review primary care, mental health care, sexual health care, um, and among many other resources. And they also talk about how to come make an appointment. So they're trying to make it really easy for students to do so. Um, they also will often help with just like teaching around sexual health. What is confidentiality? What are the rights and responsibilities of a patient when they're coming to the clinic? Um, because oftentimes when young people are coming, it's the first time they're ever coming to a clinic alone without um, a parent or guardian. And so it's our, we get to help them learn what they uh, deserve when they come to a clinic and also what the expectations are. Um, Hi, my name is Heidi Callen and I'm an integrated behavioral health clinician here at La Clinica. One of the great things is that we have really um, low barriers to access for our students and so students can come in, they can walk in the door and they can get a medical appointment and sometimes that medical appointment will lead to them being referred to behavioral health and so if they're interested in talking with someone uh, maybe they're struggling with sadness or anxiety or stress or there have been changes in their home life or they just got transferred to the school and they need someone to talk to, they can come and talk to me about whatever is on their mind. Um, and so it gives us also an opportunity then to go back to the, uh, the providers and talk to them about what supports, additional supports they might need from the medical side. Um, so it's really great to have that um, ability to, to talk to medical providers and then for them to talk to us. The American Academy of Pediatrics has declared a national emergency in child and adolescent mental health. Most young people who have mental health issues are not in treatment and not getting the care that they need. And what we also know is that 70% of youth who do receive mental health services receive it at school. So we need to be sure to build systems and structures to support students receiving that care in the school environment. TUHSD prioritized mental health and built wellness centers on each of our school campuses. So adolescents can't focus on learning if they are struggling with their mental health. I think the fact that we have prioritized wellness centers in the TAM district communicates a message to our young people that their mental health is a priority and it matters. I think it normalizes conversations about mental health. A wellness center is a space on a school campus that provides health, mental health, substance use, and sexual health services on campus. We provide both prevention and education as well as intervention services for youth at school. Wellness centers are as successful as the staff who run them and the students that participate in them. We have our wellness outreach specialist who meets everyone with a smile, a warm face, and helps them triage to figure out what they might really need. There's also the wellness coordinator, and I'm gonna throw in there the other wellness providers. If a student really does need more one-on-one -on -one support or they're in crisis, there are licensed and pre-licensed professionals who are there to help them. Those relationships, the environment that they build, is everything to make a wellness center successful. Students often step through the door because we've made it such an accessible and comforting environment. Wellness center in one word would probably be welcoming. Whenever I walk in, everyone's so positive, no matter what, what the, the thing you're coming in for is. Sometimes when you're not having the best day, to come in and see other people who are positive is great. The Wellness Center model is a three-tiered system of intervention, universal for all students, for some more targeted groups, and for some of the highest needs students, and we provide all three tiers. We have our self-regulation tools. Um, a lot of these are art-based because we do know 
that art is calming. And then we also have the wellness toolbox, which if you look on the wall of each of the wellness centers, you will see the wellness toolbox that talks about sort of different areas that can help students with regulation. So it has a thing about mindfulness, connection, movement, all the things that we know that if you're taking care of those things regularly are gonna support your mental health. We also have our area for tea, and it sounds a little bit silly, but if you're having a hard day, even just holding a warm cup of something is surprisingly soothing. You can really see that the environment that they're trying to create caters to so many students, and that like environment, the goal is just safety. And whatever that means for any student, I can see that like presented within the Wellness Center, and I'm really happy to have it. Because we have high expectations and high support in the Wellness Center, we have the trust of teachers. They know that our priority is to take care of students' well-being and emotional health and get them back into class. We're changing student lives each and every day. We're helping young people be able to focus on their learning. We're helping young people address mental health needs immediately when they need them. We're also helping young people develop coping skills to support their mental health as they move into adulthood and throughout the rest of you know, their adult lives. I am so grateful to TUHSD leadership for bringing wellness centers on campuses because wellness works. by beginning recruitment for our student leadership, now known as SAGE, Student Advocates Guiding Engagement. Our SAGE team led the way with a survey to see if students even wanted a wellness center on their campus, which led to the beginning of our team's training to lead feedback groups and the start of phase one. This is directly reflected in our space.
distance marriage and family therapist, and I'm the Wellness Center Coordinator for Eureka City Schools. I've had the honor and privilege to work here for the last three years, getting this Wellness Center off the ground from vision to reality. And our youth are gonna share about that experience, what it was like to build the center. Also really excited to share expansion plan and things for the future. So we have been really blessed to have multiple funding sources. We started this project through COVID relief money, and then we were awarded a school based mental health service provider grant that funded myself and allowed us to also hire several school social workers and to outfit our resource centers, our wellness centers. That is through the Federal Department of Education in conjunction with our community schools grant. All of our schools received California community schools funding. And that grant also allowed us to expand our wellness centers so that every single site in our school, where a nine district site now has a wellness center. We pride ourselves on our student voice and choice and Student Voice was involved in all of the creations of all of our wellness centers. Again, you'll hear more about that from our young people at this conference. Also, we're awarded this year the Project AWARE grant through SAMHSA, and that grant allows us to provide contracts with our community service providers. So this year, we are working with our Public Health Department, the United Indian Health Services. We also are working with Humboldt NeuroHealth, which is a local community-based organization for mental health, as well as Humboldt Independent Practice Model, which is a health and wellness group in our area. We're really excited that we were awarded these grants and we get to have this expansion in our area to lift up mental health and wellness. Currently, we have Tier 1 services, which is our walk-in break space. All students are allowed to take a break to use our comm room. Also have our Tier 2 services, which is our therapeutic groups, as well as our peer support specialists who meet with students and help them out in a peer-to-peer -peer way. We also have our Tier 3 services. So a lot of those are provided by our outside service providers, so our therapy, counseling, our brief interventions. All those, those services are also being provided by in-house workers, as well as for contracted service providers. So our tier three services are provided by staff, as well as outside service providers. This has allowed us to expand all of our services and be a really, really well-rounded program. So not only do we have beautiful spaces that reflect our student voice and were created by our students, which we're really proud of, but we also are able to bring the services that students are asking for. So bringing brief intervention substance use services, bringing in peer services, bringing in groups, both therapeutic groups and just empowerment groups and social groups. So we're able to provide a broad spectrum of services for our students. Wellness Center means safety and positivity. The Wellness Center means to me is confidentiality. A place where you can come when you're anxious, stressed. What do you utilize the Wellness Center for? Stressing from school. De-stressing from school. What else? No problem. You can go here and ask for help. Each of our high schools has a wellness center. We have student wellness specialists that are at these wellness centers to provide wraparound services and coordination of different programming and services to address the mental health and wellness needs of all our students. If you ever feel like you need a place to just have a safe space or if you feel the need to talk to someone, you can ask your teacher for a pass and it looks like this and you just fill out the information and they'll send you to the wellness center. And when you first come into the Wellness Center, you will be asked to fill out this intake form just so we have all your information. So is this your first time in the Wellness Center? It is. It is. Okay, so in the Wellness Center, we have different activities. You can join in on group over there, use the calming zone or activities. And we have two wellness specialists. I think the main thing is talking to kids, just being there for emotional support, mental support. In these rooms, there's a lot of like relaxing, de-stressing tools and that'll help kids to open up. It's really helped with my mental health personally because I just lost my parents and I'm, you know, a little stressed. So I come in and I talk to them or just come here for a safe space to just hang out and unwind. Students feel connected. They feel that they belong and that they feel that there is no shame in asking for help. So aside from that, we also want to promote wellness and not um, have students wait until maybe they're at a point of crisis, but really build an understanding around how to develop these different tools and strategies to ensure wellness throughout, um, throughout your life.
Limited access to mental health resources has long been a stress point for our students and families within the county. Shelter in place, distance learning, and other extraordinary circumstances have limited those resources for students and created additional stressors. While the need for mental health resources on school campuses has been long-standing, the pandemic really magnified the need to meet students where they are. Recognizing the mental health needs of students, the Santa Clara County Office of Education worked in partnership with schools and community-based organizations to support 12 wellness centers and programs in the 2021-2022 school year. In order for students to do well academically, we have to meet them where they are. We have to meet their emotional needs. We have to meet their basic needs. Do they have food? Do they have shelter? Have they been to the dentist or the doctor? Because we know that when we meet those needs, then coupled with that, academic outcomes will increase. Schools are more than just places of academia. They are community resources. Schools provide meals as well as safe, warm, inviting spaces. It makes absolute sense to address the needs of the whole student where the student is spending the majority of their day and already accessing a multitude of other resources. To inform this important work, youth advisory groups were created to ensure diverse backgrounds, perspectives, and identities were heard in the creation of these programs and centers. When it comes to student mental health, our voices are often the most critical to be listened to, but we don't always have the chance to use or share our voices. Within this past year, I've seen youth voice elevated and platformed in ways that I never really saw before. And already I can see the incredible amount of impact and change that has done. We see wellness centers popping up. We see youth forming relationships with our County Board of Supervisors and County Administrators. It's just really, really incredible to see. With every school having its own unique culture and personality, students were recruited to provide feedback on everything from the activities in the wellness centers to color and design of the paint on the walls. I know a lot of students come from a cultural background where mental health and just taking care of our overall well-being is seen as something that makes a person weak. And I know that a lot of students here, they don't have those resources at home. Like they don't feel comfortable going to their parents and asking, you know, I just need help. And we're here like eight hours a day. So it's just great to have a space where students know that they can come to get the help that they need. Not only do I hope students receive more humane care and approaches to their mental health crises and illnesses, but I also hope that these wellness centers take the advice of me and my fellow co-leads when we say that we want the person in front of us to look like us, to understand what we're going through, to have lived the experiences we did. The wellness centers vary based on the needs of the students on campus, but all of them are designed to be a welcoming place for students to take a break, practice wellness, or seek help from mental health professionals. By providing early interventions and resources at wellness centers, our hope is to prevent students from needing more intensive services. But if they do, the staff at the wellness centers are trained and equipped to meet students' needs in a way that doesn't jeopardize the student's safety at home. We've had students state that they feel more calm, that they feel understood and heard, that they feel like this is a place where they can come back to and speak to someone. There's counselors for me to talk to, like about my feelings and like about my school. I think it's helped a lot of students talk about their problems and how they feel. There's journaling for us to do that like really helps you like write out how you feel. Coloring too, to help you like just relax and forget about the outside world for a second. If something's on my mind, if I'm feeling really anxious in class, like I don't want to be in a room filled with like other students. It's like raising my anxiety. So just going to the wellness center, I could just come in and check in with myself and it just benefits me throughout the day. 
These wellness centers are already proving to have a significant impact on students. One wellness center recorded more than 700 student visits in just the first week. Additionally, student exit surveys indicated a dramatic increase in students feeling happy, calm, and less sad after leaving the wellness centers. During the pandemic, it was like hard for me mentally because I couldn't like get out of bed. I had like no motivation. I've gotten some of it back because of this, because it's just like fun to like talk to the people who work here. We're seeing increases in queer students accessing the space and saying, we feel safe here. We have seen increases in our Latino, African-American, and Asian populations accessing our center saying, we feel safe here. The initial wellness centers were made possible through the Mental Health Student Services Act grant. The long-term goal is to achieve the necessary funding to ensure all schools in Santa Clara County have a wellness center for students to access these vital services and resources. We really believe that having wellness centers on campus is imperative, and it's imperative because schools are where young people spend much of their time from early education through 12th grade. They're at our school sites every day. And so we know that the majority of students who um, need access to these services, we know that we can get them to them at schools. There is an extreme need for school-based mental health services in our county. Our goal is for every student in Santa Clara to have access to behavioral health prevention and intervention services at school. Recognizing the need for sustained and expanded investments, the Santa Clara County Office of Education continues to work with state and local lawmakers to lead initiatives to secure funding and put policies in place to address the mental well-being of our students. We finally have these wellness centers in place because of youth voices and because we have youth like myself pushing for it. So when students feel like they're going through a tough time, they know they can go to administrators and adults because they listen to us. They created this wellness center, which means that if you use your voice, positive change will come out of it. To learn more about the importance and impact of school wellness centers, visit sccoe.to slash youth health and wellness. So at Camarena Health, our school-based health centers provide a variety of services and they were designed that way to meet the total needs of the students and their families. At both of our health centers, we provide medical, family practice, full dental, behavioral health, health education, enrollment services, and behavioral health navigators. In each of our school-based health centers, we are connected to the school nurse's office. So the school nurse's office is the first entry into our school-based health center from the school side for the students. I feel like the health centers have been helpful for students' lives. There's a handful of students that I see pretty regularly that come in with conditions that you know, take a lot of lifestyle change to work through. Being on the campus and them working with the health educators and with myself, they've really learned about these conditions and these diagnoses. In a regular clinic, they kind of just learn by proxy through their parents and they just kind of do what they're told versus here they're asking whatever questions they need. It's kind of improving their health literacy, focusing on communication. I think that's the biggest thing, making sure we're explaining things at a level that they understand and also their confidence to be able to explain what their symptoms are. Very first school-based health center for Camarena Health and for the County of Madera and Madera Unified School District opened its doors in April of 2018. The dialogue around what a school-based health center was really began in about 2015. We had an idea about a model of a school-based health center for a high school campus to really combat some of the needs, absenteeism, seat time, the health and behavioral health needs of the students, and a priority for the school district was making sure that it supported the community and the families of those students. For us, we wanted to look at it as a way, how do we treat that student for all of its needs? It could be dental, it could be health education, it could be behavioral health, and it could be your medical needs as well. It took a lot of time. It wasn't an easy process. We really wanted to make sure that we did this right. 
When you think about funding sources for FQHCs in establishing school-based health centers, there's a variety of resources over the years. Some of that funding has come from health plans, HRSA has provided a lot of funding, as well as some statewide funding and grants that have been um, available for FQHCs. Our first health center was supported by a grant that we received through Anthem Blue Cross. So it helped cover some of the cost of the build for the school-based health center, and that really helps with establishing that model on school sites and getting going for those first years while you are establishing the student base and the patient population. There's been a few students who have come in with concerns or conditions that were lingering and they were really affecting their mental health, their physical health. They were very disheartened because they weren't getting better. In working with them and getting them access to you know, behavioral health counselors and myself and really honing in on what was the, the actual cause of their symptoms, that truly helped them to improve. You could just see that their overall affect was improving the way that they carried themselves. I even told one of the students, I, I feel like you look happier. Seeing them kind of improve overall well-being was very, um, that, that felt great. I have been so proud to see this model grow and just to be a natural piece of the school district and the school site. We're just a natural extension to these campuses. To see the students have successes with their health, those are some of the most gratifying things. We are making a tremendous impact to students and to the faculty and staff and teachers on campus by having these resources there. And we hear so many success stories about what it's meant to have access to care. Altura Centers for Health has been providing school-based health care in a mobile clinic since 2008 in partnership with Tulare Joint Union High School District. In 2011, Altura received a HRSA School-Based Health Center Capital Grant and purchased a new mobile clinic to replace the older unit. Primary health care is provided year-round at Tulare Western High School on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, at Tulare Tech Prep on Thursdays, and Tulare Union High School on Fridays. In 2013, Altura received a second HRSA School-Based Health Center Capital Grant, this time in partnership with Tulare City School District. The unit provides primary health care at Mulcahy Middle School on Monday, Tuesdays, and Fridays, and at Pleasant Elementary on Wednesdays and Thursdays. The mobile clinics are staffed by a family nurse practitioner who provides primary health care, a medical assistant who also drives the unit, and a bilingual patient access representative. The high school mobile clinic's medical assistant starts his day early at the main clinic where he picks up vaccines and supplies for the mobile clinic. Then he drives to Tulare Prep High School where we store the high school mobile unit overnight. He leaves his car at Tech Prep and drives a mobile clinic to the high school. The principal at each campus has reserved a parking space for the mobile clinic. The mobile clinic arrives before school starts to avoid heavy traffic when students are being dropped off. Once there, he sets up the mobile clinic. The unit is level, pop-out lobby extended, and the electrical cord is connected. Altura constructed an electrical box at each school site so the unit does not need to run on the generator. Inside, he unpacks supplies and prepares for the day. The medical mobile clinics are equipped with a pop-out reception area, a lobby area for patients to wait, a lab area and restroom, and a back exam room with a wheelchair lift.
front exam room is a little larger. Providers can chart between patients in the passenger seat. After years of requesting a dental mobile clinic, Tulare City School District's nurse was delighted when in 2020, Altura received one-time HRSA funding to purchase a third mobile unit. The dental mobile clinic is staffed with a dentist, registered dental assistant, and patient access representative who drives the unit. The dental unit has pop-outs on both sides for a spacious interior. The dental mobile clinic has a waiting area, fully equipped front dental operatory, a reception desk, a dental lab, restroom, and a rear dental operatory with a wheelchair lift. The Dental Mobile Clinic provides general dentistry intermittently for now until we are able to hire a full-time dentist to staff the unit on a regular schedule. We've been using the Dental Mobile Clinic at elementary schools to provide follow-up dental care after oral screenings of preschool and kindergartners. With the support of Tulare City School District and Tulare Joint Union High School District, Altura's mobile clinics provided a combined total of over 4,500 visits in 2023. Here you will find the wellness center located between the yellow lockers and if you walk your way down these steps and make a left hand turn, you will walk your way into the wellness center. Leg out. Here you will find the hours in which the wellness center is open. Upon walking in, you will need to one, put on a mask, two, check in with the clerk, and three, wait for someone to open and let you in through the door. Here is where you will get your vitals checked with the healthcare professional if you are getting a physical done. Here is where you can ask your healthcare provider any questions that you have and also get a physical examination done. Another thing that is offered in the wellness center is dental care where you can ask any dental professional any questions that you may have. This can include dental examinations and also dental x-rays. A lot of people have stereotypes of Oakland or East and West Oakland, and our school-based health centers are a strategy for health equity, bringing quality health care to children where they are at in schools. I hope part of what we're able to do here is to help young people understand their own brilliance. Hi, I'm Santoy Trotter. I'm the clinical director of our school-based behavioral health services in Oakland with UCSF Binioff Children's Hospital Oakland. We've been a part of, I would say, a movement to bring quality, culturally responsive, evidence-based healthcare to children where they are at in schools. We have two school-based health centers. One of our school-based health centers is located in West Oakland at McClyman's High School, and our other health center is located in East Oakland, right next door to Castlemont High School. All of our services are free. I always tell young people, you know, you're invited to come here. We're your school, school-based health center. And if you have a cousin who lives down the block and their school doesn't have a health center, they can come here too. The other thing that we do is really support young people to learn how to advocate for themselves. Our Youth Wellness Advisory Board is made out of young people who attend the high schools that we partner with. The goal is really to listen to them, 
you know, how do we best serve your community. My name is Diego Garcia. I'm a student at Castleman High School. I started taking therapy here and I was like, you know what, I have this situation where I'm feeling stress, anxiety, sadness, you know, mixed feelings. At first I was like, no, I don't want to do it. But then I was like, you know what, I got to try it. My friends also encouraged me. It's very convenient, the clinic being next door because I don't have to make phone calls. I don't have to pay for it bus, car, Uber. I could just walk out of school and walk over here. So that's one of the things I would like to change, you know, inform students that it doesn't hurt to ask for help. There's some people that, you know, think that nobody wants them there and they, like, they don't matter. But I would just like to let them know that someone out there loves them and wants to take care of them. So we're producing a video. We're gonna post it on social media. We're trying to get people informed of different situations where like it's a warning sign that you could be thinking about suicidal thoughts. What we see is as young people get well, as they have more energy, more excitement, more awareness of who they are and what they can do, then they have much more agency in the world. So it's really important that we're here in Oakland and really connecting the level of expertise that UCSF has and matching that and really listening in a humble way to what the community needs and what they want and really creating that bridge for health and wholeness and wellness. I mean, the impact is that we see young people reaching their fullest potential. Like that's what we're here for. 